In this video, we'll be focused on unsupervised learning and using it in Orange. Now in supervised learning, we have pieces of data that we train our model. And the data is labeled with a class, in this case, a cat or a dog. Now once it's trained, our model can then tell if an image is a cat or a dog. Now in unsupervised learning, we don't have these classes and labels. We just give the system the data and the unsupervised learning algorithm decides which data items are similar. So in this case, it might split the data in two. You have A on the left and B on the right. It doesn't know they're cats or dogs because there's no labels. This is called clustering. Now clustering identifies groups of similar objects in data sets. Well, what does that mean? Well, in retail, we could identify groups of households that are similar to each other. So similar size families and similar type spending. Streaming services can identify viewers that have similar behavior, and then they can use that information to target that advertising. Email marketing, again, identify consumers that are similar to each other. Again, to tailor the types of emails in marketing. Let's start off with k-means. We're gonna start off with data we've used before. We're gonna use the example CSV file. Now, if we look at our columns, select columns and join the data, we can see we've got X and Y, but classes we're not gonna use as a target variable. We're just gonna use X and Y. Now, if we look at that in the scatter plot, and we can see we've just got some data points. Now, let's get k-means, and we can attach it to our columns. Inside k-means, we've got a choice. Let's see if we say we want between two and nine, it suggests two would be the best clusters that we can get from this data. So again, we can use the scatter plot to see that. And we can see we've got the class colors in red and the class colors in blue. So these are clusters. Now, if for example, we wanted to change that to three clusters, we could force that and then we could look at our scatter plot. You can see now we have red, blue and green. So we have three clusters. You can see the color regions. So this is the clusters if we say we want three. But the silhouette score suggests that two clusters is probably the best of what we need. And there's our example. So that's k-means. Let's have a look at hierarchical clustering. We're going to use the iris data set. So we start off with a table and we can use a scatter plot. And if we look at our scatter plot, we can see we've got three types of iris that we can get from our length and width. Now with our hierarchical clustering, we have to use something called distances. So we start off connecting our data to distances. And then we're going to get our hierarchical clustering. Now we connect those two. And if we look at our clustering, we can see the data is split into clusters 
uh, here into two sections and in one of the sections a further subsection and in that section another section and it keeps going down so this is like a, a hierarchy a bit like a family tree and you can see it covers all of the data so again it uses the same approach of finding similar data for clustering so that's our hierarchical clustering now we can look inside our table for the results but with us we want to use a, a scatter diagram a scatter plot to see if it's found our clusters of irises and we can see it has it's clustered into the three types of iris using the petal length and width so that's hierarchical clustering clustering using a hierarchical approach now in association rules we're looking to see one item is related with another so for example if customers buy coke do they also buy rice we can see when customer buy both now if that happens a lot then we want to associate that rule so association rules used to find correlations and co-occurrences between data sets so we can use orange we can use associate which is a add-on so you can see here you have to install add-ons to use associate and we're looking at the item sets and we can use support and confidence so support we're just really looking at the fraction of transactions that contains an item set so if for example there were many people who bought eggs and that was a high percentage of transactions then that would have a high score for support so we're looking for frequent item sets confidence we're looking for that something's bought a lot and occurs when something else is bought with it so for example the fraction of how often b occurs in transactions that contains a so when someone buys a they also buy b now this is handy so if you know a customer buys a product as in a then they probably want to buy b as well so if B occurs a lot, when A is bought, B is probably also bought. So in the supermarket, for example, then they make sure the products are together. So customers will buy the item B, the consequent, if they've bought A, the antizen. There's also lift. In this example, we have the same confidence of someone buying uh, a book. They've already bought a biscuit. As someone who buys jam if they've already bought bread which perhaps is not really what we're looking for so we can use lift to see how much we expect the items to be bought together so in this case the number of items sold for bread and jam will be higher than for shoes so a good high lift score shows better co-occurrence now we can use orange for association rules we can start off with our data set and we're going to use the food mark 2000 data set now if you're using the association rules you need the add-on called associate so make sure this box is ticked if it's not just tick the box and you will need to install it okay let's assume you have that so now we can connect the table to see our data we have our actually we have our iris set we want our food mark set don't we so let's change that and now we have these different if you like items in a basket our item sets and we have a huge collection so these are just lists of items in shopping basket so we start off with our frequent item set 
So what occurs, what items occur in many transactions? So we connect our data. Now, we don't start off with any data. We need to look up a minimum amount. So a minimum amount of support. So if we have 0 0.01, so we need items to occur at least in 10% or sorry, 0.1% of all the transactions. Let's find the item sets that meet that criteria. You can see here we've got the items that occur. Fruit and vegetables happen quite a lot in 28% and you can see the different percentages of the other items. So these are the frequent item sets. So that's our support. Now what else can we do? We can look for our association rules. So our association rules are going to be frequent item sets, but with high confidence. So we can connect our data set, our data, and now we can use the minimum support, the percentage that we want, and minimum confidence. So we can change that once we have a setting, let's say 10%, we can find the rules. So we're looking for rules that have minimum support, so a, a support higher than this threshold and a confidence higher than this threshold. So you can see we have the support figures and the confidence figures and also the lift figures. So we can see the items that are bought and an item that is also bought with the first item. So that's our association rules in orange. Now also in unsupervised learning, we have dimension reduction, which sounds complicated, but all we're really doing is we're looking at the columns in the table and finding out which ones are useful, and which ones are not so useful. So for example, we can use PCA, principal component analysis and we can connect that to our data set so let's see we've got bank marketing and we haven't really got a very good example for you unfortunately for PCA but essentially if we look at our data table PCA gives a score for each feature each column in the table and decides which ones are more useful than others. So this is handy in machine learning because if we've got lots of data, it makes the model very complicated. So maybe we could have 50 columns, but we only actually need two or three. So we can reduce the amount of columns, the amount of features, and they're called dimensions. So that's called dimension reduction. So PCA is one approach to dimension reduction, one algorithm that can reduce dimensions, which reduces features, reduces columns in a table. So that's unsupervised learning. Okay, if you like that video, click like and good luck.